This is my buddy Otis, and he uh, he's a vegetarian sometimes. Likes carrots. This is Abe, my alpaca friend. And I'm reading them a bedtime story. This will put anyone to sleep. Hmm. The prophet proceeds further to predict and illustrate the wonderful events by the resurrection of the Valley of Dry Bones, I guessed it, <laughs> which God, uh, which figure God thus explains. Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold my, behold, they say, our bones are dried <laughs> and our hopes lost. We are cut off from our parts. Uh-oh, you're not going to make him spit at me, are you? Oh, well, I got my hoodie up. I guess it won't matter from some more carrots. And I'll give you one more, too. <sighs> Therefore prophecy, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and bring you into the land of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O oh my people, <laughs> and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit into you and ye shall live. And I shall place in place you in your land. Finally, he'll pay off those IOUs. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it, and not just some other guy writing this down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and performed it, saith the Lord. The reunion of the two branches of that people follows. By the figure of the two sticks taken by the prophet. On the one he writes for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Upon the other for Joseph the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Well, gee, they, there's hardly any problem there anymore. It's kind of outdated. Should be talking more about the Palestinian situation. How's he going to fix that? Oh, wait, that's right. They're, they're fucked. <laughs> Lest any should say the prediction, which here seems to foretell the restoration of the ten tribes, as well as that of the Jews, were established in the restoration of <laughs> that few of the Israelites who clave to the Jews under the house of David. <laughs> and the ten tribes are were irrecoverably lost. All right. Damn, you're greedy. You just can't get enough of them carrots, huh? Oh. I have to bring you turnips next, see how you like that. Uh. You're fucking my, my video up, buddy! And making it cool at the same time. These sticks 
miraculously became one in the prophet's hand, which is thus explained. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel, their general ancient name, including the twelve tribes. Now we're just talking about the first about those ten. <laughs> From among the heathen, whither they be gone, and I will gather them on every side and bring them into my, my own land. God, you're slobbery. Urgh. Have some of that back. <laughs> uh, and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king of them. And they shall be no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. All this is like out of date. <laughs> That's not the issue anymore. And they shall dwell in the land that I gave unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. Some of them. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children forever. Can a doubt here rest on the subject, whether the Jews and the ten tribes shall be reestablished in Palestine? Can such divine testimony as this be done away? But similar testimonies to the point are numerous in the prophets. Pray tell. These passages... Wait, this passage has never yet received a primary or partial fulfillment. The whole of it remains to be fulfilled. Some of the predictions, which are to have an ultimate accomplishment in this final restoration, have a primary one in the restoration from the 70 years captivity in Babylon. But even this cannot be said of the prophet under consideration. None of, those, none of those written on the second stick in the hand of the prophet have ever yet been recovered. Not yet. It's not false until time ends and it turns out it was false. Otherwise, it's still possible. It's a prophecy. It awaits the, in the future somewhere, possibly. The whole passage is intimately connected with the battle of that great day, which introduces the millennium, as appears in the two following chapters. Here the house of Israel enter again upon their everlasting possession of the land of promise, which God engaged to Abraham. And I'll pick this up in the middle of page 33. I can take no more. That's dog slobber all over me. But no, I'll pack a spit, I don't think. 